Hi everyone and welcome to the second day of our first ever Neo Neon Developer Days. I'm Raul Shebri, Developer Advocate in Neon, and today I'm very excited to be talking to you about branching with the Neon API. If you missed yesterday's talk, our CEO Nikita announced two major updates. One, Neon is live, so no more invite gates. You can go ahead and try Neon at neon.tech. Please let us know what you think, and we'd love to see what you're building with Neon. Second, our branching feature is finally available, and this is what we're going to be covering today. So the question is, what is branching? Well, branching is what you would expect. It's a copy of your Postgres database that you can use for your different environments. You can also use it for development and testing. And you can also create unlimited number of branches because Neon uses copy on write, which means you only increase the storage related to your branch if you're inserting or updating data. And also you can automate some of the processes relating to your branches. So you can create and delete uh, branches using the Neon API. And we're gonna see an example of that today. So before I get going, what are the problems that branching solve? And why should you care? Well, to better understand that, I have a, a little scenario here for you. So let's say that you're building an app with your friends, Bruce and Tony, and that app uses Postgres in production. So your customers are requesting some features that are important to them. And those features require some changes into the database, but obviously you don't want to break anything in production. So traditionally you would have something like a development and a staging environment that will mimic your production database, but not quite because you don't have the same data shared across all the environments. And in order to solve that problem, you would add additional complexity to your um, overall architecture. You would add something like a Kafka or like a Pulsar or even script that you write yourself to stream data from your production into your development and staging environment in order to have the same data and in order to test your uh, feature against real production data. Well, the problem with that is that you will maintain additional copies of your production database that are gonna be as big as your production database. And this is something that you don't necessarily want because it just increases the cost related, related to your storage. But also there's a third problem, which is related to your development workflow, where, um, Let's assume that all of you <clears> or <throat> multiple people in, in your team want to uh, deploy a feature that requires some changes into the database. And you know from history that Bruce actually has uh, a, a good tracking record of smashing everything that he touches. So you and Tony make a business decision to get out of the way, let Bruce implement his changes first before, before implementing yours. But that kind of practice is actually unsustainable and very inefficient because in bigger teams, you will need to parallelize tasks as much as you can if you want to release fast. Um, one way to solve that problem is also like to have a local database, but since here you, we're using production data, then you can uh, clearly see what the problem is if you use uh, a production size data in your local machine. All right, so um, here's a recap of the problems that we have. So first of all, the data is not the same across all your environments. Um, and if you want to solve number one, you uh, very likely will add more complexity and more code uh, to your overall architecture, maybe code that you don't want to focus on and will that will distract you from your focus and, and from your uh, main application. And third, you will maintain production size databases in your development and staging environments, which is something that maybe you don't want to do. And fourth, if you want to have a database in your local environment that uses production database, then that uh, could be very resource consuming. Um, all right. With this, let's talk a little bit about branching uh, and let's talk a little bit about Neon here. So I'm representing Neon as a timeline rather than a database because Neon is first of all serverless, it's serverless Postgres and it separates storage and compute. So the storage engine here stores what we call uh, right ahead log records, which means that your, uh, that your database have access to past data too, which is pretty cool. So your staging here in your staging environment is just a branch that you can create using the UI or the API that represents a state of your production database at a given point in time. So you wanna have the most up-to-date information. You can just create a branch from present 
Or if you want to test against the previous state of your database, you can simply create a branch from the past. From a storage perspective, creating a branch is computationally inexpensive because of copy and write uh, that we explained before. But what happens if your uh, branch is actually inactive? Um, because we said before that you're more likely to use your production database than your staging database or, or, or your development database. So in this case, the compute instance associated with your inactive branch will just stop running after about five minutes of inactivity right now, but will be reactivated, of course, if it's used. And it's something that Neon handles for you out of the box, so it's not something that you need to configure or need to worry about. So, so far, we established the following. We established that you can create branches from the present, from the past, and also uh, that your compute can stop and restart. So what does that mean for your team? Well, it means that everybody uh, in your team and in your development team can get a branch to run test against, then dispose of it once the feature is ready. Uh, and with the Neon API, we can just do that. We can automate branch creation and deletion uh, for development and testing purposes. Uh, for instance, if you're using GitHub Action and you're using end-to-end -end testing, then we can imagine a scenario where you can uh, uh, run a job, create a branch, do your test, then delete your branch. And this is exactly what I'm going to show you in the demo, but I have a final scenario here, which is uh, what happens if you accidentally delete data or, or if, you want, if we have any kind of unwanted behavior. Well, need some data and you need to restore that data. Since you can uh, go back to the past, you can, uh, you can find out where that data was last in your database and you can create a branch from there and restore that data. All right, so I have a demo for you. Let's go ahead and, and show you what I have. So here I'm on my Neon console and actually this is my uh, next to do project. Let me go to the dashboard and show you what I have. So I have one branch that you can see it's main and two databases, or well, main database and the shadow database. And actually I have a co connection string that I can copy from here. Um, and I've already pasted it into two uh, environment variables, which are database URL and shadow database URL that I'm using in my Prism, Prisma schema. I've already migrated uh, my schema. So let me actually go ahead to the tables uh, here and, and show you that. All right. So I just have two rows here. Um, and this is just a simple Next.js uh, application that uses Prisma. Um, and then I'm going to show you right here. So I have two items here. It's just uh, watch No Way Home and watch Multiverse of Madness. All right. OK, so what else can I show you from here? So let's say that I want to create a new branch. Then I can go to the branching page here, the, the, to, to get to the branches page, sorry. And I can just create a new branch. And I can create it from head, and I can create it from a certain point in time. And we're also uh, going to support uh, log sequence number uh, in, in the near future. But <clears throat> so let me go back to the branches page here. Um, and typically, what I want to do is uh, I want to do some changes to my uh, uh, to my application. So I, I want to add the feature. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get checkout dash b. And I'm going to create a new branch, a new Git branch, that I'm going to call my branch. And once I hit Enter, one of the things that we're currently working on uh, is to allow you to create a, a Neon branch using a Git checkout command. So here, if I refresh this page, you can see that I've created uh, a my branch, Postgres branch, uh, a Neon branch. And the nice thing here is that uh, not only I've have pasted the uh, database URL and shadow database URL. No, sorry, I have not pasted them. They've actually been created for me um, by the um, by this uh, when I created the when I created the Git branch, and you can see that they are different, uh, although they share the same user and password. Uh, so this is one of the nice things. So it automatically created the, the environment variables for me. But also, since I'm using Prisma, and this is a branch, so if I go to my table, you see that the main branch has the Prisma migrations, and it also 
the, the, the new branch has the same thing. So if I just do npm run that, this should, this should work out of the box. Let me just go to my application and refresh it. Um, and this is possible actually, so this is gonna take a little bit of time. So this is possible using the uh, API um, uh, that you can find a reference in the documentation. And uh, in order to use the API, you can also just uh, create an API key and I'll show you how to do that in a second, but it looks like that my application has been refreshed. So here, what I'm gonna do is just to uh, update these two values here. And I go back to my console. And if I go to to do, you can see that uh, these uh, completed is, are set to true here. But if I go to my main branch, then they should be as they were before uh, at false. Okay. Um, I was speaking about the API key. So this is possible. Uh, what, I've, what I've done uh, just now was possible using the API key. And if I go to my account and developer setting, then I can generate in the API key. And once I do that, let me just do that. Uh, let's say demo. Okay, I can copy it and I can then use it uh, right here. And then I can go ahead and, and see uh, my projects if I want to. Like if I, I can try this one out, execute it, then I can see that it returns my projects with their IDs and different information about it. Okay. Uh, cool. What else can I do with this? So let me go back to next to do to the branches page. Um, so what else can I do with this? So once that I have a branch um, that I can use, then then I add my changes. So let's say that here uh, I can do that app to do app demo and and I made my file changes and let's say that I'm happy with my changes so I'm going to just commit those and uh, commit with the message update index.js and then what I'm going to do is git push origin okay and once I do that if I go to GitHub here, then let me refresh the page. But it usually should show me the other branch and with the possibility of creating a pull request. It's clearly not doing that, but I can see that I have one commit ahead. So I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna create manually then. I'm gonna create a pull request. And once I create a pull request, then I have a series of actions that are actually going to uh, execute. So I have here this Neon Developer Days Actions demo. So let's go to Actions. Um, and I have this end-to-end -end testing that is currently running. And what is this doing? So let me refresh this branch page actually. So you can see that I created an action demo branch here uh, because it used uh, this particular uh, GitHub action, Neon Database Create Branch Action. And then for the sake of this uh, demo, all it's doing is checking out the code, installing the dependencies, and then running this Neon database delete branch. So here, since it has uh, executed everything, if I refresh this page, then this uh, action demo should disappear. And that's it, yeah, it disappeared. So it works perfectly fine. Um, let me show you the code of this. All right. My action is here. Let me make it a little bit bigger. And I can close my terminal. So all that this action is doing is using this GitHub action neon database slash create branch action. So it's in, currently in beta. Um, and all I'm giving it as inputs is a project ID, branch ID, a branch name, and also an API key that I showed you how to, uh, how to get from the console. Uh, and I use those as secrets. And then uh, I'm running whatever in between. So here I have uh, my outputs, which are the product ID and the branch ID. And that's exactly what I need to uh, delete the, uh, uh, the branch afterwards. And I'm using the Neon database 
uh, delete branch action, which already is in beta. And here, all I did is uh, checked out my code and installed the dependencies, but you can imagine running some tests against the newly created branch um, uh, and then dispose of it when you don't need it anymore. Okay, so this is it for actually for my demo. Let's go back to the presentation. All right, so this is what we learned today. Well, we learned what Neon Branching is. So Neon Branching allows you to create a copy of your database uh, for your project environments, for development, also for testing. Uh, we created a branch uh, for development. And uh, the nice thing is that uh, every developer in your team can actually get a branch and they can you can all work on it uh, in parallel. And also we used GitHub Actions to create a branch uh, to do some testing. And then we deleted the branch using the uh, Neon API. So this is it for, for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So let us know what you think. Um, and uh, please check out Neon on neon.tech. Uh, again, uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.